welcome to another edition of the Plimpton Podcast. I'm Andrew Hill. Coming up this time, we cover the changeover of Stanitors, events at the Lamb Feast, a local drama group for budding young actors and actresses, and we speak with a dietitian based at Dereford Hospital. But firstly, Plimpton has a new youth ambassador. She's Molly Disney, a pupil at Heels School. She successfully underwent a selection process to secure her new role. Shortly after receiving the news that she'd been successful, she told me how she felt. I feel very honoured, actually, to be the next youth ambassador to encourage young people to speak out and ensure that their voice will be heard. What inspired you to actually put yourself forward for this role? I think uh, just the fact that a lot of... There is a lot of stigma around young people and I think that we really do deserve for our voices to be heard. Uh, And what do you see as the main issues affecting the youth of Plimpton at the moment? Um, Primarily uh, mental health, helping with young students with school stress and exam stress um, and just ensuring that they know where to go for support when they need it. What do you feel is causing all this uh, anxiety and stress these days? Um, I think just the pressures of being a young person within society today and the expectations that you are perhaps required or thought that you're required to live up to. And what do you hope uh, to be able to achieve in your forthcoming year? Um, I hope to achieve um, for young people to have their voices heard and I hope that this role will develop into something that is definitely invited to many events and that will be carried on um, after my role is ended. Okay, well congratulations and uh, all the best for the year ahead. Thank you very much. Molly replaced Isaac Hudson who was Plimpton's first youth ambassador. His final public engagement was at the Lamb Feast where Master of Ceremonies John Govier introduced him to those attending. And Isaac's here with us now and it's actually Isaac's uh, final day and final duty as the youth ambassador. So Isaac, just tell us a little bit about what the job of Youth Ambassador for Plimpton involves? Well, basically, um, some of you may be aware that a couple of years ago we had a May Queen, um, but after uh, changing the May Queen to the Youth Ambassador in the year where I joined, it consisted of more of going to uh, meetings around Plimpton. Uh, For instance, I went to Plimpton Academy with a uh, subject of PCSOs in Plimpton. Um, I go to community events like this, and uh, anything ranging from this to uh, church services. Um, In May, I went to the Lord Mayor's choosing, uh, so lots of different things, um, anything to do with the community. And how much much clout do you hold? Can you you inform decisions? Oh, um, well, I don't know about that, but um, I I, I definitely have a voice within uh, the community council meetings. I mean, um, as uh, the person who's... The literal job there is to speak for the youth um, on the council, make sure they have a voice within the community. Um, I think that there, there hasn't been a meeting where I haven't been asked to say something about uh, current going ons and, and, and have uh, voice my opinion. Um, but I don't know if I've. Well, I think the person with the most influence is definitely the stanator. But yeah. May I ask your age? I'm 15. And your successor has been chosen. Starts tomorrow. What? What advice would you have for her? Well, I think you get out what you put in. I mean, it's, it's especially when I joined, it was a blank canvas because I was the first person in the role. Um, it's really what you make of it because you have, uh, especially as you go on in the role, you, you can you make like brilliant contacts where you can make so many uh, things happen and it's completely your choice whether you want to make that happen or not. Your CV is going to be a lot more interesting from now on. Uh, yeah, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> um, well, it's been an experience, yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for the last 12 months. Good luck to your successor. Uh, Andrew Hill is the stanator here at the moment, but like uh, Isaac, it's his actual last day today, and our new stanator, who starts the role tomorrow, is here with us. It's Natalie Harrison. Natalie, first of all, for anyone who doesn't know, what is a stanator. Okay. So a stanator is a bit like um, a mini mayor. Uh, Plimpton is a stannery town, uh, one of very few, a mining town, an old mining town. So we have a tradition of having a stanator um, who represents the community of Plimpton um, in the, within the community, but also more widely at events across um, Plymouth, 
um, and further afield, some scientists have, have been further afield and represented us in America, for example. But it's really about giving Plimpton an identity and uh, in that role, uh, the Stanator is the representative of the, uh, the community of Plimpton. What made you want to do it? I've been involved with the community for many, many years, um, well over 20, 25 years. Um, uh, I've been in the background uh, sort of helping. Uh, I've had a role supporting the May Queen and the attendants uh, prior, to, prior to the youth ambassador in place. Um, and I'm really interested in the community that I live in. Uh, so uh, it, it, it was... Uh, time for me to put myself forward and to uh, hopefully uh, improve things and uh, give the community more of a voice than it already has uh, and uh, help the youth ambassador to, to actually uh, promote important issues within, within our area. I just finally want to know what you're most looking forward to over the next 12 months whilst you're in office. Uh, I'm, I'm really interested in, in meeting a lot of young young people. Uh, just back when I first started the community council, we had uh, quite a lot of groups that were involved with young people and children, um, something I work with and I'm passionate about. Um, so I would really like to get involved in some of the activities uh, and, and know more about what's happening in the community for um, our young people as well as people that uh, where there's more established groups that are maybe more well-known in the area. And when we meet you out on the street, how do we address you? Is it, is it mom? Do we doff our caps? or? No, I'm still just Natalie. I'm still, I'm still the same person. And within my community council role, I'll still be minute secretary and running around in the background. Um, it, not, nothing will change um, other than hopefully just giving us um, a, a more... Uh, more opportunities to promote Plimpton as a brilliant place to live and to work. Laura Shepherd has set up some new drama groups in our area. I caught up with her recently at the Herod House Coffee Bar, where she told me more. Um, so I've been doing it for about a year. Um, I've got two separate classes in the Plimpton area, and I run them from St Morris Primary School. So um, two classes are four to eight-year-olds, and my second class is eight to 14-year-olds. These classes are all about promoting confidence, um, health and well-being, um, communication skills, uh, and just having a whole lot of fun, really. Now, uh, uh, we hear a lot about uh, mental health uh, with children uh, these days, and it is uh, a bit of an issue how people are suffering from stress and anxiety, but I believe that y- you feel that uh, getting involved in, in drama is a way of helping people in those situations. Yeah, definitely. Um anxiety and sort of lack of confidence is a massive thing at the moment for young children and adults struggle to deal with that let alone children they don't know how to express themselves they don't know how to ask for help um but these classes really bring them out of themselves and allow them to express themselves freely in a safe and supportive environment um and honestly what comes out of it is fantastic to see i mean some of the children that have come to my classes very first class won't even speak in front of everybody um and by the end they're getting up they're singing in front of an audience of about 100 people um it's honestly amazing to see how much they can progress in such a short short period of time i mean that's amazing it must give you personally a bit of a buzz to to see that yeah definitely i i I absolutely love children and, and i want them to benefit from drama and dance and singing the way i did um Initially, I was quite a shy child, but I ended up going off to drama school, um, doing a lot of public speaking and things like that. And and it really does have such a positive effect on you. And it gives you those essential life skills, you know, further down the line where you're able to go and fulfill a really successful career um, and things like that. So it's not just for now. It has such a positive impact moving forward with your life. Now, you do several performances uh, during the course uh, of a year. Tell us a bit about those. So um, I've done quite a few performances. We do three a year. Uh, the first one we did was a Christmas pantomime, which was written by myself, which was about a naughty little elf, and it was quite fun and playful. The children absolutely loved that. Uh, the second one that we did was um, Annie, so that was very musical theatre based. So it was drama, dance, and singing, and children love getting up and having a laugh and 
dancing and singing and the parents, the reception from the parents was fantastic. So we did that one at Ivy Bridge Community College. It was a massive stage and there was children as young as four there singing on their own. It was absolutely amazing. Um, and then the one that we've got coming up is Alice in Wonderland. Um, so that's got a mixed mix of uh, drama, dance and singing as well in it. And it's about a 40-minute show. Um, and we're doing that at Plimpton Academy, so formerly Ridgeway School. And there's, an, there's about 18 in the show altogether. Um, and it's a combination of the two classes. So bringing the four- and five-year-olds together with the eight- and nine- and ten-year-olds. And it's so good to see how they communicate with each other even though they've got that, you know, that range of age. And that event that Laura was mentioning took place on July the 4th. But in terms of things yet to come, she'll be holding some taster sessions in future. And if you'd like more information, you can give her a call on 079 39 930779. That's 079 39 930779. National Dietetics Week took place recently, and at Dereford Hospital there was a stand promoting the role of dietitians and emphasising the importance of diet. That's where I met Sandra Wood. Hello. Yes, we're promoting the work of the dietitians um, this week, particularly what dietitians do to prevent long term uh, health conditions such as heart disease, diabetes and all those sort of lifestyle related diseases that can occur later in life. Because there is a strong emphasis now in the hospital isn't there on the preventative uh, measures and trying to reduce uh, the visits that uh, people need to make here. Absolutely I mean as we all know that the NHS is under so much pressure um, to try and treat all these diseases what we want to do is to be able to focus a bit more at the earlier stages and prevent these things happening or help to prevent them. So. No, I must admit when I go into uh, the supermarket each week to select my goods I don't pay too much attention to what the contents is I just think well yeah I might like that or I might like that do you find that's a, a general theme among people yes that's right and of course we are battling with the manufacturers um, because they obviously want to sell certain products that give them a high margin um, and so they will promote foods such as for example low fat yogurts are promoted as being healthy but a lot of them will have a lot of sugar in so it's, it's helping people to understand what's really going on with some of the food that they're having and what they're buying. I mean, you you mentioned sugar there. I mean, I was quite shocked recently uh, to to discover just how much sugar there is in some of the drinks that uh, people buy uh, these days. Yes, that's right. We've got a small, I mean, over there, you can see there's a small bottle of um, apple juice, 500 mils, and it's got nine teaspoons of sugar in it. Which is just frightening, really. Uh, and even in sweets, because I think you've got some demonstrations here, haven't you? You've got uh, Haribo, for example, and you've got a, a yes. jar there which shows the number, the, you know, the volume of sugar in that. That's absolutely so we've amazing. Got some typical like Friday night <laughs> snacks that people might buy when they're going to the cinema or when they're in front of the TV watching, um, watching a film. The kind of things that you might have. And if yeah, so Haribos. This is if you had a full bag, you'd be having. Oh uh, gosh, it's like 150 grams of sugar. It's a massive amount of sugar. And of course, no one ever eats a full bag of Haribos, do they? Ever. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, it's just something you don't think about. Because you, you, if you, you if you had to actually measure out that sugar yeah, and put in something, that you just scary. wouldn't do it. That is scary. In fact, yeah, that's, that's right. It's absolutely scary how much is in. So we're offering some alternatives, some um, some um, cheaper things. Now, you, you know, any of these sugary sweets are the same. It doesn't have to be this particular brand, does it? But. Um, that's what we're really trying to promote, how to make maybe some more wiser decisions, lower fat decisions if you can. I've just seen Snackage so I must admit I do actually buy them for snacks, so what's, what's the problem with those? <laughs> oh no, 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 no problem, in fact they're very, very low calorie. This here, the reason we had it is we're demonstrating the amount of fat. I see, right. It's very much lower in fat than your standard bag of crisps, for example, so you've still got the salt content, but on the whole that's a pretty good one, um, and there are lots of other similar things now coming out baked baked crisps and things that are a lot healthier than the than the original high higher calorie crisps so i mean you you've got some products that have a lot of fat you've got other products that have uh, a lot of sugar in how does the uninitiated person yeah. you know, get educated on yeah. what they actually choose yeah. to eat um and that can be difficult because we've also got salt so you've got the three things and what i usually say is well what are you really focusing on if someone's really really keen to lose weight they will be very focused on reducing the fat in their diet probably and they may think well okay i'm going to have to have something that's maybe got a bit of salt in in order to reduce the amount of saturated fat for example i'll give you an example so you've got roasted peanuts 
as a snack. So say you love the sort of salty, kind of crunchy thing, you might then choose to have your, your um, low-fat crisps instead. It's still got salt, but at least you're getting a lot less calories. Mm-hmm. So I think for, for someone who's got a particular thing in mind, uh, you might want to say, I'll, I'll focus on the fat. Um, and I may not be able to arrive at the perfect solution and the perfect diet but at least we're mm. working towards it same if someone's got diabetes they may we well be very much focused more on sugar and they may not care so much about the fat possibly mm-hmm. um, and that's where the dietitians will come in because we can help people to focus in on what their priority might be okay After all, not everybody needs to lose weight no and, and what about uh, the, the, the uh, consequences of eating too much salt then what's, uh, what's the situation uh, well yes that can raise your blood pressure Extra stress on your kidney and raise your blood pressure. And if you've got raised blood pressure, you're more likely to get heart disease or strokes, um, kidney, kidney issues. And it's a big problem generally for the westernised population, the amount of salt we have. And avoiding it can be tremendously difficult. A medieval group were among the performers at this year's Lamb Feast. They were introduced to the watching crowd by Master of Ceremonies John Govier. Uh, let me introduce you to Bohemond. Hello who is the leader for today of Historia Normanis. So tell me a little bit about Historia Normanis. So we're a a 12th and early 13th century reenactment group. Um, We've recently started a branch in Plymouth, uh, and we train here on the Castle Green whenever we can get down and weather permitting. Um, We've got groups all around the UK. Uh, Some of the Welsh uh, lads and ladies have come down today to help us out. Um, on number wise but yeah we like to have fights and do living history and you can see us fight and do living history later. Uh, You're a fairly new group and I I was looking on Facebook the other day and I saw a a note that said I've just been up to Castle Green and there are a couple of blokes beating heck out of each other with swords that was you wasn't it? Yeah yeah that was us that was uh, me and a couple of our other members literally beating the hell out of each other with swords Um, that's what a large part of it is if you want to do combat we can do that. We use live steel weapons, which you'll see in a minute. They make a nice steel clang noise. Um, but we also do things such as living history, which is where we learn how people lived back in the day, live like how they did. We've got a nice display on today that includes how a, a medieval tent might have looked back then. Um, and yeah, people come along and say hello. <laughs> I'm going to let you get started any second now. But, but before we do, if anybody watches you today and enjoys what they see, you are looking for new members. Yeah, so as a new group, we're constantly recruiting and looking for new members. Um, We've got quite a nice, sturdy following at the minute, but we're always happy to welcome new people. So if you want to come along, learn how people fought in the medieval era or lived in the medieval era, then get in touch. The new standard for 2018 and 19 is Natalie Harrison. She was formally proposed by the Community Council Chairman, Rose Hamley. I was pleased to nominate Natalie for the standard. I first met Natalie some six years ago when I first attended the community council meetings. It was obvious then that Natalie was very much committed to the community. Having lived in Plimpton for so many years, she has always had Plimpton's interest in mind. Natalie's role on the committee has allowed her to develop a commitment to the youth of the area. And when she became involved with the selection of May Queen and attendance, and lately the youth ambassador, her empathy with young people came to the fore. She has always aimed to be there when they attended functions, even though they were accompanied by a parent. She was prepared to help them feel at home and went out of her way to ensure they enjoyed their time. A couple of years ago, she joined the committee of the Plimpton St Mary Neighbourhood Forum and became an active member of the subcommittee, which has prepared the draft plan. Here, her ability and knowledge of what was needed to see this through has been second to none. All this has been done was carrying out a most demanding job. Natalie is prepared to go the extra mile. Extra mile? (laughs) Well, last month, this was very evident at our Mayfair. She is always willing to do any job that is required, but last month, she excelled herself. She came up to Herod at about 8 o'clock in the morning and ran here, there and everywhere, making sure everything was okay. Then to Capital, she went home, had some tea, and then practiced the 10K to prepare herself for the Plymouth Half Marathon the following week. Without doubt, Natalie would take on the role of Plimpton Stanager with enthusiasm and professionalism and be a great ambassador for Plimpton. Mind you, she may be seen running to events with a coffee in one hand and a sandwich in the other when she's not had time for a tea. <laughs> Natalie, have a great year. You deserve it. St 
Morris Judo Club are among regular performers at the Lamb Feast and this year was no exception. Those attending were told a bit more about the group and what they do. The club, as you can see, you know, varies in age groups and skill levels and we come together today on this special day each year to give a display of what they can do. Now martial arts, as I understand it, relies a lot on etiquette and on a lot of respect. Absolutely. Being Japanese and being from the martial arts group, uh, it all depends on the sociability of people, the way they mix together and work as a team, uh, and their respect for each other and their care that they take. If you've got a senior player with a younger one, the senior player is responsible for the younger one's health during their practice session. And it's defensive rather than offensive. It is. Judo is self-defense, really. You get the first chance to do something about the assignment and then get away out of it. But you can, with you, though, it's also restrain people with ground holds and arm locks and strangles. And you're going to give an opportunity for some people here today to take part and have a go. But for now, your group are ready, so I'll hand over to you, Tony. As we heard earlier, Plimpton's new youth ambassador is Molly Disney. She was inaugurated into office on the same night as the new senator. This is what she had to say as she took to the stage for her inauguration. I'd firstly like to just thank everyone who picked me as the new youth ambassador as I'm very excited to go for the next 12 months. Um, I, I'm very honoured to be in this position and I'm excited to personalise and fit this role around various issues that surround Plimpton and young people um, today. Um, and I'm very excited to fulfill some of the ideas that I'm already noting down, um, as I have many. Um, and I hope you all have a great evening, and just to thank you very much again for electing me. Um, and I hope that I do a great job as the new Plimpton Youth Ambassador, so thank you very much. Molly then went on to make her formal promise as Youth Ambassador. I promise that I will faithfully and truly perform my duties as um, Plimpton Youth Ambassador and act as a role model for the young people of the Stanley town of Plimpton. I will assist the Stanator, contribute to Plimpton Community Council and represent the views of the young people of the area. I will face the challenge of the role of Plimpton Youth Ambassador with respect and humility and learn from the experience. All these duties I will undertake for the next 12 months from this day. Back to the Lamb Feast, and it turned out to be a special event for a dog with a bit of a sad background history, as John Govier explained. So, Lula has a trophy, it's the Hercules trophy. It was donated uh, for the dog with a bit of a story to tell, the one that caught the judges. Uh, attention and Iona can you tell us that story that's won you the trophy today? Yeah um, basically Lula was abandoned with the whole litter of puppies and her mum in a flat and Lula and her mum were the only ones to survive. Uh, Lula also had head trauma to some degree and that's why I think she may have been um, beaten when she was about three weeks old and that's probably why she's that. And you're not her first owner either? No I'm a fan of her. So she's given me four months, she's 100% non-reactive, gets on with cats, dogs, children, everything. <laughs> But she's a bit of a handful. Um, yeah, her attention span's not great. Let's face it, she's deaf. Um, but other than that, she's absolutely good as gold. She's got a few allergies, but she's a perfect dog. Now, how do you how do you actually handle the, the deafness side of things? Do you have to do things very differently? Um, you can teach them sign language, but giving her attention span, it's really difficult. So at the moment, we're working on recall and getting her to stay with me and focus on who I am and make sure she beelines for me instead of everybody else. And once you've got that on track, we'll then start bringing in the sit, recall, things like that. Here in an ancient stunnery town, the Plimpton Podcast. The inauguration of the new Stanister was attended this year by the Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Chris Maven, who lives in the town. He was called upon to give a formal address to those present. Thank you very much. Uh, to the new Stanister of Pilton, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, uh, can I just say that it's been a, a great delight to have been invited to come here this evening, not least because I'm also, along with my wife, a, a resident of Pilton. Um, should I say Plimpton? <laughs> One of the lasting memories I have, I've been a city councillor on and off since 1987. I remember standing in the council chamber many, many years ago 
and I heard somebody say Plymouth. And Councillor Prue Hawkins stood up and reminded everybody quite forcefully that it's Plymouth Town. And never forget it. And I've never forgotten that from that day to this. So I hope I won't make a mistake in the season. Um, as I say, it's been a great pleasure as residents of Plympton, and Deputy Lady Mayoress and myself, are fully aware of the value and the pride that the, the committee here and members of the wider public in Plympton have of having a stature within the Plympton area and recognising still the value of the old Plympton town. Today is about the investiture of a new stature, celebrating the efforts of the Plympton community and giving members of the community the opportunity to take inspiration from its rich history. And it is a rich history too. In 1967, the ancient borough of Plympton became part of the city of Plymouth. However, it wasn't too long before the local community felt the need to be represented in a civic capacity in much the same way that a mayor or a leader of a council would do. So in 1980 it was decided that Plympton, would, uh, the Plympton Community Council would elect somebody annually to represent pe uh, people within the Plympton area and carry out the duties thereof of uh, a Stanley Town of Devon. Plympton being one of the four Stanley towns, they decided to call that person a Stanley. Quite rightly so, in my opinion. And it really does give us great pleasure to be here for such an auspicious occasion this evening. The investiture of Natalie Harrison as the 39th Stanley of Plympton for the year 2018 19. Plimpton is known for its wide and very very calendar of events, as already been pointed out by the outgoing standard of this evening. Uh, there is no doubt from when you read the local press of the amount of activity that goes on out here for fundraisers right across the Plimpton community and different various groups, individuals, uh, you know, from all sectors of the community, the church, the voluntary service the uh, residents' associations, a lot of people that are involved in making sure that Plymouth people have the best existence that we can all possibly give them. And I applaud that as a member of the Plymouth Council, looking inward into Plymouth and seeing the value of the work that you all do out here. And certainly I'm somebody at the head, the standard, to act on your behalf all civic engagements is a, a fantastic thing. And I believe that Natalie will be a worthy ambassador for the people of Clinton. However, she will not be alone, as already been pointed out. The new role that began in 2017 for uh, a youth ambassador um, was created to fill the void of the representation of the youth in the area. They felt that they too needed a voice, and to fill that void was something that I think that once recognised needs to be supported and applauded. This year you elected Molly Disney as Plympton's Youth Ambassador, and Molly's already demonstrated her willingness to pursue the youth cause, and I am support I'm sure she will be a tremendous support for Natalie in her year of office. And by doing so, I believe that today and throughout the year, Molly will encourage young people to realise their own potential. I'm sure you do want to stand there and listen to me talking all night, and I'd sure like to come down and meet a few of you individually and talk about the worthwhile work that you do in the Plympton community. So I'm going to stop now. It just remains for me to say, on behalf of the people of Plympton and the wider city of Plymouth, to wish both of you every success and very best wishes in your year of office. And long may it continue. Thank you very much.
At Stanitor's Night each year, the incoming Stanitor chooses a member of the local clergy to perform an official blessing. Natalie Harrison's selection for the role was the Reverend Will Sweeney. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come together to share in food and fellowship. This evening we ask for your blessings upon Natalie and Molly as they begin their roles as Stanitor and Youth Ambassador. We ask that you guide them in all that they do and that they may be a blessing to all those whom they represent. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And finally for this edition, it's the concluding part of my interview with dietitian Sandra Wood. I mean, most people these days live, live very busy lives. I must say, when I go to the supermarket, I've just not got the time to sort of stand there no, examining no, all the no. details on the back of a product to see what's, uh, what's in it. So what do you well, sort of recommend? You, uh, well, uh, it all depends. People have busy lives. Are you able to make a little bit more from scratch at home? If you are, um, some things can be quite simple to do at home. You have control over what goes into it. The other thing you can do is, if you don't have time for that, then look at your food labels. So your uh, ready meals and things like that will have a food light, a label. Traffic light system, if you see salt has got red, avoid it. Right, Go okay. for the ones with the green or the, or the yellow. So is there an optimum level of fat, salt and sugar that a person well, should have as an intake during the course of the week? Well, the is recommended, the guidelines are recommended as six grams a day, which means nothing to, any, to anybody, does it? It's about a teaspoon, and that sounds a lot. However, when you think about that a slice of bread has got almost half a gram in it, it quickly adds up. Mm-hmm. Breakfast cereals are high in salt, some of them. Um, so by the time you, you know, leave work, you leave to go to work or to school, you can already have had up to a so third of your intake a day. So it can quickly escalate. So, I mean, do you feel there's a, a need to sort of raise the profile of this, perhaps in schools as a, as a starting point? You know, people leaving school, setting up home for the first time, you know, making perhaps their first grocery selections and for the first a, time. I mean, well, where do they start? Yeah, I mean, there is a lot more work that goes on in schools these days, both by the teachers and, you know, people that would go in. A lot, lot more. And certainly that's, uh, that's without question a necessary area of public education. It starts with the children. Mm. Um, and often you find the children are educating the parents. <laughs> now, you've had this uh, stall going for several hours uh, here today. What sort of interest has been shown by members of the public? Well, um, we have got a wide selection of different fact sheets that are produced by the British Dietetic Association, which people have found helpful. For example, um, some people have found, found the more medical ones, like the diabetes ones, um, lower in cholesterol, very, very useful. Other people have gone for sports nutrition. They're trying to get fit and they're wanting to know how to build a bit of muscle mass, and things like that. Other people want to lose weight. It's a very general store. We have just tried to help people with their questions along the day. So obviously this has been here today, but uh, where do people access this information more routinely? Oh, you can get it all online. So we've got a poster here which signposts people to the British Data Association. They've got this range of food fact sheets they can go to. Um, yeah, so the address for that is uh, www.bda.uk.com forward slash food facts. Just type in British Dietetic Association. That will do it. Uh, the other thing about today, we, promote, we, we have been promoting the five fruit and veg a day, and, and Serco have been brilliant. We've been able to offer lots of different fruit. Oh, I know, we've only got apples left now. That's because all the other lovely fruit that they gave us is all gone, because you, you've joined us, joined us at the end of the day. But, um, so that's what we've been trying to do as well, promote yeah. fry, five fruit and, day, fruit and veg a day. So is your department generally busy with, uh, with what it does? That's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. I mean, there's always um, more demand um, than we can meet, but we, we cover all the wards in the hospital. We have a range of outpatient clinics. Uh, we do some group sessions as well for patient education. We do various, various things. And, um, you know, we, we obviously try to stretch our resources as, as far and wide as we can. And I think even in the, in the hospital here, you know, over the course of the past year or so, you know, you work with people like Warrens and that to sort of improve uh, uh, the offering for people as they come through the hospital. That's right. Uh, yeah, we're working on the ward menus as well to try and offer more choice um, and more variety in terms of specialised diets. Um, and, and yes, we work with Warrens as well. So, yeah. And, and this uh, National Dietetics Week, that's uh, an annual ongoing event, isn't it? Yes, so that is, that is like I said, it is a national thing. So every, first week in June every year, we will focus on some, some theme. And this year's theme was preventing long-term um, ill health. Yeah, and that's something that's going to be sort of to the fore going forward, isn't it? Uh, as the you know, health service in the area works a lot more on preventative uh, measures rather than sort of reactive once people have got problems. Yeah. 
OK, well, Sandra, thanks very much indeed uh, for telling us about that uh, today and I uh, wish you the, uh, all the best for the remaining uh, hour or so you've got of your stall here today. Thank you. And, and, uh, I might, uh, yes, they're looking very, uh, very, very appetising. I will take one. Thanks very much indeed. OK, <laughs> bye-bye. bye-bye now. And alas, that's it for another episode. Our theme music has been provided by audionautics.com. Until the next time, thanks for listening and bye for now. Podcast.